Hello and welcome to North Country Matters. My name is Donna Seymour and I'm a member of the St. Lawrence County branch of the American Association of University Women, one of the civic partners for this show. Today we have Rolani Prudhomme, the Outreach Education Coordinator for the Occupational Health Clinical Center of the North Country as a guest in the studio. Rolani, welcome to North Country Matters. This is your first time here. So you are the Outreach Education Coordinator for the Occupational Health Clinical Center. It's located in Canton. Tell us a little bit about what the OHCC does, the clients you serve, and what you do as the um, Outreach and Education Coordinator. All right. Um, thanks for having me here. I'm happy to, to do this. Um, I'm the Outreach and Education Coordinator at uh, Occupational Health Clinical Center of the North Country, one of three clinics that are kind of uh, sister clinics run under the medical direction of Dr. Lax. Um, you know, a little known fact is that uh, occupational disease is the fourth leading cause of death in New York State. And so the Occupational Health Clinical Center of the North Country was established to diagnose treat and prevent occupational disease. Uh, we do see people as well for occupational uh, injury as well and, and to make no confusion about it, it is occupational disease is different than something that, that has to do with occupational therapy. A lot of people get that kind of confused. So we're looking at things that could be caused in the workplace by some kind of exposure and how to detect the, that it's work related and what kind of treatments it needs and what kind of prevention uh, methods could be best be used to prevent um, disease and or injury. Um, a few other things about the clinic is that we uh, accept all insurances. You don't need a doctor's referral to come to us. Um, we don't turn anyone away for inability to pay. And um, we also see active workers as well as retirees. That's an important thing. You don't have to be working, you know, to come to us to find out if something maybe that you were exposed to decades ago might be causing the symptoms you're experiencing. And how many uh, counties do, does the um, center serve overall? Our center in Canton serves seven counties. Okay. Uh, Lewis, Jefferson, St. Lawrence, uh, Franklin, Hamilton, Clinton, and Essex. That's a lot of geography. It is. <laughs> so it's a tough job with a very small budget, right. and we have a nurse practitioner on site, and we have a medical office assistant and myself for, you know, your regular work week. Um, once a month, uh, Dr. Lax is there, and then we also have uh, Greg Sawinski, our industrial hygienist, who visits the area um, occasionally for work site um, consultations mm -hmm. or for special trainings um, that he gives. Now, last fall we had your colleague, Jeanette Zockler. She's the project manager for the Syracuse office, and she was talking about a survey that she's been doing on the low-wage workers' health. And in particular, she spoke to us about the kinds of injuries that workers are experiencing on the job and this actually has a, a direct link to one of the projects that you're focusing on this spring, mm -hmm. the Workers Memorial Theater Project. But before we get to that, let's talk a little bit about what Workers Memorial Day is, because that's probably not something that a lot of people are familiar with. Right, and I, I neglected to tell you what, what my work is as an outreach and education okay. um, coordinator, but this is it. That This is a product of, of my work. So I'm kind of like this liaison between the community and the clinic. And so in addition to letting the community know what kind of services we provide and, you know, um, where we are uh, and also letting people know about it, getting people talking about hazards in the workplace, um, we also want to hear from people about what are they experiencing. And so I'm out there giving talks and then listening to people to see, you know, what do we need to know and take account of while we're developing our programming. So this uh, project is... Um, um, well, you wanted me to talk about yeah, Workers Memorial Day. Just, just in a general, a little bit, so little bit because, know. as I say, people yeah. are probably not really familiar with that particular um, uh, event. Right. Workers Memorial Day is an international um, day of commemoration. Um, it is a day of remembrance of people who have lost their lives from work-related either accidents or disease. Um, and it's to acknowledge the suffering that, and the grieving that their families experience um, it, with their loss. And also it's a day to recommit ourselves uh, to preventing workplace injury and illness and death, ultimately. 
Um, and it's also, you know, I like to think of it as well as a time that you can think of, uh, you know, preventing not only death but, you know, disability. And thinking of those other kinds of losses when somebody gets sick, say even, even injuring your back can completely change your life. Mm -hmm. If you can no longer do your job, then that's a great loss, you know, to, to your sense of who you are, to your sense of pride and, and things like that. So, um, you know, those are the people we're also thinking of, you know, when we remember Workers' Memorial Day. Um, the, um, mm -hmm. the labor councils um, sometimes will work with us um, in, the, mm -hmm. in, the, in the central New York area. We traditionally put on a breakfast uh, that where um, a lot of labor leaders will, will come and we'll have speakers and we'll, you know, acknowledge and, and oftentimes uh, list workers by name who have actually died within the year from that region, you know, as a... Okay, um, so because you are at the center, you're working with people who have suffered job-related in injuries um, or possible death. Mm -hmm. Worker Memorial Day is a good time to focus on the risks that workers are going going through every day on the job. And and work is, is pretty risky in some particular cases. Mm -hmm. So the Workers Memorial Theater Project is what you're doing this year to bring attention to worker safety and to highlight uh, workers, uh, Worker Memorial Day. So tell us a little bit about the project and you know who your partners are and what you're actually going to be doing. Okay. Um, so really, I just want to acknowledge that the former director, she just retired, Pat Rector. Uh, it was originally in a conversation with her. She was the director of the outreach and education in the Syracuse Clinic. Um, we were talking about how to get people, how to touch people's hearts and minds and how to get them talking about uh, work um, risks and hazards. And she mentioned this play as a very powerful piece. And then I, you know, looked around to try to find a theater director who might be interested. And then actually the AAUW and the League of Women Voters came through, chipped in uh, to purchase some uh, scripts uh, for us to look over. And the, um, the director of this play, Karen Wells of the Grass River Players, um, read it and fell in love with it and, and now is taking it up. And that was a year ago, mm -hmm. just about this month. And um, so since then, uh, we've... Um, gained three new major sponsors. Mm -hmm. um, the Canton Community Fund has given us a generous donation to print up this 36 page booklet that will everyone uh, up to 800 people attending these shows will be able to have a copy and um, we have the Work Workforce Development Institute who is uh, a major sponsor as well as um, a most recent one, the um, Jefferson, Lewis, and St. Lawrence County Central Trades and oh, Labor Council, okay, AFL-CIO. Yeah. So tell us a little bit about the play. That what, what's the theme of the play and what's it, what it's about and um, you know what you plan to, what's the message of, of the play? So the play is called These Shining Lives by Melanie Marnich. And um, it tells the story of the radium girls of the 1920s and 30s. And these are young women who oftentimes just right out of, uh, out of high school uh, might be their first job. Um, they, are, um, they were painting watch faces with radium, um, paint that contained radium. So the that glow it, in the dark uh, watch faces. Yeah. Luminous. And at that time, radium was thought to be a cure-all. And you know, really was um, a big uh, you know discovery in science that it could it could you know help to cure cancer, but uh, also had these detrimental effects to these women. So, the discovery of the um, detrimental effects was um, kind of through these women um, realizing that what they were experiencing was more than some just fatigue and aches and pains, but, you know, women were developing some very bizarre conditions, you know, where their bones were becoming weak and breaking and um, just, and they were literally glowing. Right, <laughs> In addition, right. you know, it was really getting into them. The, the women um, on the job were taught to, um, to do this fine, meticulous painting. They were taught to uh, lick the brushes to get a fine tip and then dip it into the powder and then they could paint it. And then they're continually all day long exposing themselves to the radium. And they didn't think much of it because they were told it was a healthful uh, substance. 
So, um, then what and happens again, today? like like many kinds of workplace exposures, the ill effects only happen over time. So that it isn't like the first time you do this, you don't feel well. It takes a while for this to happen, exactly. and it isn't always easy to make the connection between something like that and not feeling well down the road. Right. Yeah. And that's that's one of the key reasons why occupational disease goes unrecognized. It's actually there are 10 times more people die from occupational disease than from another kind of on the job workplace fatality. You know, so, um, you know, there are, in the U.S. there are uh, 4,500 people who die from an on the job fatality, but there are over 50,000 that die from occupational disease. And, and let's talk for a second, um, occupational disease, uh, many people up here will have heard of uh, exposure to asbestos and asbestosis as yeah, uh, something that is a very debilitating disease because uh, of the plants in Messina where a lot of a lot of workers were exposed to that over time and there were actually some uh, class action lawsuits that people um, eventually began to understand that these had long-term uh, illness was coming from the exposure to asbestos so uh, that's like radium though these are these are examples that happen right here in the North Country Right, and and another one would be like you say, also with asbestos, but from the um, asbestos form containing talc, mm -hmm. from the talc miners. Um, so sometimes, uh, yeah, it takes some quite a while to figure out what is actually making these people sick, and it takes a lot of uh, surveillance and and really um, investigating, and and investigating uh, something that's very uncomfortable because it rocks the boat. Sure. If you you know, and this that's part of what this this story of this play, why it rings true for so many people, because it, it really um, tells the story of those tensions between your loyalty to your employer, your love of your job, the, you know, it tells the story of these just ordinary girls who they, you know, are so excited to be a part of this new era and, you know, women had just won the right to vote and now they're making money and it just, it opens them to this whole uh, future of dreams, you know, where, and of things that they hadn't, you know, thought that could be possible and then as they start to become ill, it's, it's an agonizing process for them to come to terms with that. Uh, all the characters in the play become ill of the, of the girls and the radium girls, they, get sick in different ways and they So there's no real consistency between their symptoms and yet it all traces back to the so fact that they sharing, were in this same and they don't really want to focus on it. They want to kind of distract themselves from that. They want to, you know, it was the 20s, you know, it was party time, you know, and they they just want to have a good time. They want to have they want to enjoy life, you know, and they all have families and and so it's, it's agonizing for them to come to terms with it. And the main character, who is based on the real woman, Catherine uh, Donahue, um, in this uh, factory in Ottawa, Illinois, um, she is the one who ends up really taking a stand. And that, you know, there were many appeals. And, and after she finally won her sixth appeal, uh, 21 days later, she was dead. Um, and, and actually, that's, that's quite a remarkable story for as ill as she was, that she actually lasted long enough to see a successful conclusion to her. True. Because so often when people are caught up in these situations, they don't live long enough to actually have the satisfaction of having a successful uh, case. And that is the sad truth. You see so many people who um, not only do they not see a successful case, but many times, most of the time, they don't have the energy to even fight right. um, a case. And, and so the workers' comp system is set up to protect workers from having to, you know, go to court over every time they get sick. But somehow that still hasn't seemed to change have changed as much as we would have liked. No, and as much as we think of today uh, with modern uh, legislation and safety procedures and all that, work is still very dangerous and, and there are a lot of uh, unknowns about going to, going to work, aren't there, when it comes to the long-term health consequences. There are, and, and some of the, what is, this is going to be um, bringing up are really um, looking at some of the more vulnerable populations. Um, you know, the, in this play, it's, it's talking about women who um, 
women are overrepresented in low wage work and you know uh, just like other minorities are and um, w one of the things that we want to do with the, making this uh, event a bit of an educational event as well as the the entertainment piece is to um, look at uh, what are what are the vulnerable groups in our area, either historically or currently, that need attention? And, and history is important, too, because, you know, as we consider new enterprises and as we take care of our re retirees. But, um, and the idea, too, is not just to be pointing the finger at uh, all employers as the, the bad guys, you know. Um, I don't imagine that most employers really want to hurt their employees. But um, I'm hoping that this uh, play will stir up discussion, you know, uh, both among uh, employers, you know, and employees or workers and, and health care providers, you know, everyone to be thinking about, um, you know, how can we do a better job at prevention and, you know, and do right by workers and really support um, somebody who does make a complaint or have a concern to not shut them up, but rather, you know, create more of an opening and acceptance and support for it, it takes a lot of courage to speak up about something being wrong on the job. And it's a big risk in itself. And that's something that um, that I would like to see change. Right. And one of the uh, one of the good pieces about this is the fact that you've got the Grass River players coming in, which have um, such a um, a strong presence in the community anyway, mm -hmm. and they have such a fantastic record of, of doing that. So the fact that they're actually excited about putting this on and see not only the, the play as something that is, has entertainment value, but is often the case art can look at things, uh, serious questions in a way that sometimes going to a lecture can't in terms of engaging the emotion. So you have the, uh, we have the play, but we're all, there's also a lot of opportunity here for community education. So tell us a little bit about some of the historical displays that you're, you're planning around this and actually how you're going to use the booklet as a resource. Right, and as you say, the, um, the play really is really profoundly beautiful, so it will, it will touch people's hearts. Um, the um, displays, both the displays and the um, booklet are designed um, to create, serve as sort of a bridge between the um, story that's being told and, and kind of what's happening, what, how does this relate to our lives. And so um, the displays themselves during the intermission of the play, the audience members will be able to go out and, and look at them and they'll be um, developed by uh, graduate students of the SUNY Potsdam's um, newest um, program in uh, community health, their graduate degree program in community health. Um, I'm actually adjuncting a, and teaching a course for them on environmental and occupational health, and their assignment will be to research and create these displays, and each one will be highlighting a specific um, theme you know, uh, whether it be looking at um, hazardous conditions in our area like farming and construction, um, or um, even healthcare as, as a dangerous, uh, you know, occupation. Um, you know, nurses, for example, have the highest injury rate um, of any occupation. Um, right. In and, fact, and I, was, a, I was reading a little while ago that home health care, home health aides are, are very, very prone to, um, to injury because they're doing so much physical labor around trying right. to help someone who may have an injury themselves or not be able to uh, move right. on their own. And so, you know, and, and it's, you know, it's, it's tough with the, the, the local. I think, you know, North Country mentality is, you know, it's traditionally very tough. You know, people, um, you know, don't whine. They don't like to go to the doctors, you know. And so when you talk about, like, injuries, you know, it's like, well, so you hurt your back. I mean, th there's, there's a normalization of pain and suffering that goes along with a job. And, it, and it's amazing how in the play it's the same exact thing. You know, working, people who are hard, really hard working, they typically think that you have to hurt in order to work. Um, but the thing is with these, these kind of injuries the, the, that it typically happen with the nurses, for example, is... Um, Oftentimes, it's so debilitating that they may not be able to return to their job. So it really has repercussions, mm -hmm. you know, above and beyond just, oh, you know, it hurts. Right. Um, so, and the displays may also be um, 
looking at uh, challenge, the challenges specific to vulnerable populations like women um, or immigrants um, and you know people that are working in low-wage jobs that typically have less health and safety protections. Mm -hmm. um, so, and then the booklet um, the, and show guide is going to be combined like a, a show guide, but then also incorporate essays and historical uh, information about the history of this particular story, but essays about how you know, it relates to us here today. And, um, and then after the show, there will be some post-show discussions uh, on each of the nights. Oh, so, oh, will it be the same set of questions, or will you be looking at different be aspects different each people. night? There will yeah, be different people every night helping to lead those discussions. So, yeah, that's that's going to be a good part of it, so that people can kind of talk back. Right, and when when people leave the play, they can take the uh, the show guide with them, and it's actually going to be a reference tool in terms of having information and who exactly. to contact and oh, yeah. some kinds of resources like sure. that. So that's really important. So let's talk a little bit, um, Merlani, about uh, when and where and you know how to get tickets and that sort of thing so people can put this on their calendar. Okay. And um, well, it's happening. These Shining Lives um, by Melanie Marnick is um, directed by Karen Wells. Um, there, we're having four showings, April 22nd, 23rd, 24th, and 25th. And they're all at the uh, Unitarian Universalist Church of Canton. And, and that's uh, right on Main Street, right so Main it's Street. easy to find. Yep. Across from the park. Exactly. And um, tickets are $10 for adults, 5 for uh, students. And we have a group discount of 20% off for 10 you know, or more people. And how, so many, how, many people can, um, how many people can you house for each showing? 200. 200. So okay. that's why I say about approximately about 800 yeah. people. And we really want to pack the house. So you know, there are different ways you can support to help make this, um, this event a success. Um, you know, besides financially, you know, we have our major sponsors, but we also need to get um, smaller sponsors. You can make tax deductible donations to get an ad in this program booklet. Um, and information about that, we'll talk about how to get it. Um, but also, you know, people can just, you know, recruit people to go attend the event. Um, you can uh, contact me and tell me the ways that you can help, maybe by posting posters, distributing flyers, or even doing some other kind of volunteer work to make this happen. Um, information about that is on our uh, website in the Save the Date flyer and sponsorship guide. Yeah, and what's really interesting about that is, is this is a great opportunity for groups to actually come and uh, go to the play as a group and, you know, buy a block of tickets at a discount. So uh, that's, uh, that's kind of an interesting um, opportunity. And the fact that there's going to be this educational piece uh, each night a little bit different, that's another great opportunity to um, do that. So if somebody wants to buy a ticket, do they, who do they contact about the ticket purchases? Um, right now, they're talking to me. Okay. <laughs> so it's the one-woman show here. Um, no, uh, ma, they would call me, Raylani Prudhomme, at 315-744-0651. Uh, and uh, we do have the, uh, the OCHH website is uh, the graphics on the show tonight, so people can also go to your website and find different ways. They can find a copy of the uh, show flyer, right? Yes, there. and that's so. basically OHCC Upstate. Right. Uh, O-R-G. And uh, you have a variety of uh, pricing for um, the, the, the ads that yes. businesses or uh, whoever can take out in that. Mm -hmm. who, um, who are you um, targeting for your advertisements? What kind of businesses? What kinds of health care providers? Well, we're looking at a number of different groups. We're looking at, yeah, health providers. Um, we're looking at, well, not university. For attendance, we're looking at universities um, and specific departments related to health care. Right. Um, we're looking at uh, lawyers. Um, we're looking at um, also, um, who am I forgetting for businesses? Oh, well, um, not exactly businesses, but um, labor. Uh, right, union labor locals, unions, right. You know, um, right. You know, show your support. Um, but individuals, families, you know, we're um, the smallest um, ad is actually a three liner that is, you know, you can just remember somebody. Um, you know, or, or say thank you to somebody, you know, just uh, a small thing, you know, and that's a $50 donation. So 
This is by far the most ambitious project you've ever undertaken for Workers Memorial Day, right? I mean, I know there's been maybe ever like a parade before or a breakfast, as you say, but, but this is really a, a big four-day event that's involving a lot of people, and uh, well, it's quite a production in many I ways. I don't know as much about the history of the Central New York uh, Clinic, but uh, I know that they have done a, a theater production um, before. And so, but I don't know, uh, yeah, that it was on Workers Memorial Day. Um, it's definitely the it's the biggest thing that I've done at all with with uh, Occupational Health Clinical Center, and um, as far as in the North Country, for sure. Um, other than, you know, our lead conference that we did, the, this is this is the biggest. But this thing. is actually something that you you're outreaching to the general public for, rather than to a specific set of, of providers or something Absolutely. like that. So well, in terms of that, because everybody either works yeah. or has workers or right. you know knows a worker or has grandfather's a worker or you know this affects everybody. Yeah, and um, and a lot of people, as you say, don't actually think about the um, the physical consequences of work, and so. Um, bringing this play to the forefront, having the kinds of discussions that you're going to be having after each one of the showings, and the work that uh, the students are doing to prepare the displays is all designed to get people thinking about, yeah. um, about safety and prevention and, and treatment in the event that something and has it's, happened. It's kind of a taboo subject in a, a lot of ways because, or it's something that it's like, not taken seriously and you know the trainings for health and safety I, I sometimes hear especially young workers just saying like oh gosh that's boring or you know I know when I was a newer worker I never thought about those OSHA posters on the wall or nothing's going to happen to me and you know as I get more into it I realize that this is really serious you know there are so many ways it's like young people are are a vulnerable population they're eager to please and you know don't have the experience and the training you know that old that more experienced workers would have, and so and they're more likely to take risks. And and, and they can't assess the consequences of taking those that's risks true. as well because right. they don't have that experience. That's right. that's for sure. And of course, there's that um, that that incredible sense of uh, immortality and invulnerability that that young kids have anyway. So that you know nothing Absolutely. bad is going to happen. So Absolutely. so uh, that's so those are really we serious. We want it to be more in the public uh, consciousness and less uh, stigmatized. Um, you know, you see um, so many people when I do these talks uh, uh, with working people or people who are looking for work. A lot of times I hear people saying about they think about fifty percent of workers comp. Uh, you know, claims are fraudulent when really it's only 2%. And so that means that 98% of the people <laughs> who are making their claims are. And are how many claims. people don't make a claim? Partly That's because of that many, stigma. Many times, so, many, many times so times yeah, exactly. Never would make a claim. I mean, by the time people make a claim, they're, they're pretty desperate oftentimes. That's right. And they have, they have delayed getting um, the treatment that would have actually allowed them to to be out of pain and to be able to go back to work because they took such a long time to make that happen. Well, Rolani, thank you for coming in um, and doing the, the, uh, the program with us. I the play it. is The Having Shining you. Lives. It will be held at the Canton Unitarian Universalist Church on April 22nd, 23rd, 24th, and 25th. This is your go-to for uh, ticket information and for advertising information. So. Uh, if this is something that you would like to support, please please do get a hold of Rolani. And what's your deadline for um, support? Uh, when when is the when is the uh, booklet you get close? Ads in yeah, would be March sixth. Okay, so you've so got a little bit of time to do that. Great, thank you. And and I for one am very much looking forward to coming to the play. So, uh, our time is up. Thank you. These conversations are a production of North Country Matters, produced here in the studios of WCKN on the campus of Clarkson University. The show is a civic collaboration between the St. Lawrence County branch of the American Association of University Women, the St. Lawrence County League of Women Voters, and the Communication and Media Department here at Clarkson. Until next time, remember, our North Country Matters.